moment, Lord, we pray, O oh God, that your Holy Spirit will be with us, guide and direct everything that is going to be said and done here, and your name may be glorified in the process. Thank you, and give us wisdom, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, we are going to look at, uh, I can call it the introduction. Okay. The, in fact, this is the most important part of any godly medical missionary training. Mm-hmm. Because um, today we have a lot of knowledge. Mm-hmm. But we are lacking a lot of understanding. Okay. A lot of knowledge, but lack of understanding of the knowledge. I will take an example of nutrition today. You cannot have all the degree you want in nutrition. You have knowledge. And as a nutritionist, you will recommend cheese, butter, and egg, and all of these things we call protein, salt, and this and that. This give you this, this give you that. That's a lot of knowledge. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to understanding, the gorilla in the bush never went to school. But the gorilla knew that exactly what to eat to be well. And a medical doctor went to school, have all the degree, don't know what to eat, even though they have knowledge. So understanding is very important. Today, everybody, almost everybody have Bible. But how many people still don't understand what is in the Bible? We have more doctorates, doctors today, many doctors, professors, doctors in theology. But how much understanding they have of what they know? It's like every level of life, knowledge is increasing, the understanding is really decreasing. So when it comes to health, I start questioning a lot of stuff and start having my mind much open based on the reality. I look at it at the end time reality. When knowledge is increasing, the understanding is having a lot of trouble. And I start looking again on the little knowledge I have in the medical missionary field. And I start seeing that uh-uh, we are in trouble. Things need to be start questioned. There was a vision of Sister White on how the enemy is going to poison the food. You can read this in uh, Dreamery Prophecy of L. N. G. White, written by the, uh, Dr. Herbert Douglas. I think so. Yeah. God showed to her in a vision the issue about health. Because God knew we are going to be in a severe health crisis. So, I start paying much more attention to it. God always, always knew the future or the end from the beginning. So if God takes time to reveal to us what Satan will do, then we have to be very careful. And I start questioning everything. And I start unlearning a lot of things and learn new things. I will just give some couple of examples. When we come to herbs, Satan knows we are going to rely on herbs, and he ends up making a lot of gem herbs. For example, oregano. 
If you make oil from Oregon, the wild Oregon, you don't have nothing, I mean scientifically proven, that nothing in the pharmacy has antibiotics stronger than Oregon oil, nothing. And then guess what they did? They, they go ahead and then they make or uh, made uh, GMO Oregon oil. And guess what? You think on long term it's going to hurt you. Let's start questioning these things. I learned this from Dr. Ingram, okay? He ex- have a whole scientific base on this research. So that's nothing from me. I just learn from people who have much knowledge and much uh, tools to make research. And I start looking at most of the herbs we are using. Most of the herbs we're using today are GMO. Mercy. And I'm asking myself, we are using fatal poison to treat disease? This is trouble right there. Another example. We recommend many Adventists as vegan eat a lot of wheat. And most of the meat are made from wheat, soy, this and that. And I start questioning the soy. If you go in the market right now, the soy, the bean is big. But the soy bean I grew up knowing is very small. And when I research, I find out that now they make this big GMO uh, soy to produce more industrial plastic. And soy used to be good, now it's become dangerous. But guess what? All the boys will say repeating soy is good, soy is good, but nobody really treats soy in seeing that soy become dangerous. Because that question how we are vegan and we are end, we end up with cancer and all the same disease. Something's not correct. Hmm. I take another example, the wheat or the grain. Back then, I remember there was a man who had a brain cancer. Nothing can help you become completely paralyzed. This man was taking 20 ounces of wheat grass juice. After nine months, he was completely healed and went back to work. Just on that. He was feeding by the mouth and by the bottle, and by the anal. And this wheat grass healed him completely. That is way back then, when the wheat was safe. Today, the way they grow the wheat, the wheat can even produce its own defense against the insects. And wheat becomes so dangerous, so toxic today. The wheat destroys the microbiome of your gut. And that's how we have all these leaky gut problems. And if you have a leaky gut problem, you're going to have any kind of autoimmune disease. But guess what? We always tell people eating whole wheat. We don't check where the wheat comes from, who's made it, how it's grown, none. Because we only know that the wheat is good. But when it comes to understanding that the wheat becomes poisonous, we don't check that. So this is the challenges we are facing now when it comes to medical mission research. So let's take an example that you have a patient, and then you're going to use the herb, but mistakenly you are using GMO herbs. You put the person on diet, mistakenly you put the person on GMO diet. That's a big trouble. It's not because you don't want to do what is right. It's because you don't have understanding that these last days, Everything, almost everything is poison, so we need to be very careful. As much as we can avoid this poison, we should. So we have to bring a serious understanding about how the health is not just about being okay. The health becomes a serious issue in the great controversy. We all believe that the health is the right arm, the health message is the right arm of the gospel. Okay, Satan is against the gospel. So if you are on a battlefield and your enemy is using the right arm to beat you, 
you're going to try to chop all that arm. So we need to know that Satan is seriously involved in counterfeiting diet, or the like health message. And he's using everything we know already to pervert them to, this, to completely mess up the world. I went to a center, I don't want to mention the center. There was a feeding corn to the cancer patient and many other stuff, wheat, wheat flour, stuff like that. I was so disappointed. I was like, wow. Maybe they don't know or maybe they neglect. The most of us, we are not paying attention to that, the danger of GMO. I can tell you the truth. GMO wheat is dangerous than the meat you're eating. I can tell you that. It will hurt you so bad. Why? There's something called chemical affinity. You see, we are made of dust. God makes us from dust. That means everything in us is dust. Everything. That when you die, you return right back to dust. Now, God, in his wisdom, has commanded the plants to take all we need from that dust. So, the sun, the water, the air, all of that, with all and the plants work to take the nutrients from the soil and make everything ready for us to consume. And these have a chemical affinity with our DNA structure. So our well, DNA basic, is basically made of amino acid, carbohydrate, and minerals. Now, if you bring in any mineral that is not appropriate, it creates a serious damage to your DNA. That's why today we talk about broken gene. It comes from bad food, bad lifestyle. So there are many people did the research the video I just sent you yesterday to watch, Dr. Blelo. The man explained to you how the grain, not only wheat, most of the grain, rice. Today we can see a lot of plastic rice out there. Jasmine rice, they make the good one, they make the plastic one. It is like how a human being can make a machine to make a plastic rice. And knowing very well this data, this will clog up your system, but they keep doing it anyway. That means it is a big conspiracy behind health. So did Dr. Blaylock show us how they go in prison And uh, they take violent prisoners, change their diet, remove all the grain, give them avocado, coconut oil, all the good fats because your brain is made of good fat, more than 60% of fat. And that fat is the main part of your myelin sheet on your nerve cells around your axon. If you are having bad fat, you're going to be in big, big trouble. So they change the diet of these people, put the good fat, good mineral, all the need, guess what? The violent prisoner become very calm. And then they change it. They went to the student, take a violent student, change their diet, they become calm. It was like, wait a minute, something's right here. Yeah. They go to the elderly, have Alzheimer, all of this problem, change the diet, put these things, they start getting well. There's another doctor called David Perlmutter. I watch him on CNN. He used the same thing, changing the diet of Alzheimer, schizophrenia patient, all of that, and they all recover without medication. And I'm asking myself, if this man as a doctor can do this, and come on the 
TV channel. How we still giving to these patients these bad drugs that are making their case worse? We are like in a world where we are just working against ourselves. So this, I can see that even the system, it is so becoming the right arm of the devil to perform the work of the enemy. Anything that is good, for most of the time, is prohibited. There are many naturopathic doctors put in jail, some of them killed. For example, Dr. Schultz, his clinic has been burned down several times, burned down the whole clinic. There's a doctor, Dr. Newsom from Idaho, I learned a lot from him. He ended up in a big trouble because he was using all the natural medicine to heal a lot of people. So anybody using a natural way, God way to heal, the person becomes illegal. They become troublemaker. And you are in big trouble. So health is more than just we are willing to become healthy and all of this. It is a war. Yeah, people say it's about money. It's more than money because all the money the government needs, they can print it all. They have the machine to print the money. It's not really money thing. It is the war against human nature. The next thing is the brain. Our brain is the only medium of communication we have with God. Let me repeat it again. Our brain is the only medium of communication we have with God. So if you are Satan, where will you attack? The brain. The GMO grain, GMO with GMO this, all of this is destroy your mic- the microbiome of your gut. Remember, we have more nerve cells in our gut than in our brain. If you knock out down your gut, your brain is gone. So most of these brain problems coming from our brain, our gut being destroyed, our problem being messed up. The problem comes from there. So it's not just about health. It's about attacking the very image of God in man. It's obstructing the way God wants to use to heal and to restore and to save his people. And we are not very aware of these things. Many, how you call it, veggie meat, veggie chicken, veggie beef, whatever we have in most of our Adventist uh, uh, health stores, these are very dangerous because they put ammonia and more, many, many chemicals on this thing to preserve it. And we just eat it because it's not a meat, it's vegan. It's a very dangerous. So, we have a lot of knowledge today. The understanding of common sense is a big crisis. That's why I call anybody who is stepping this world. Not to rely only on knowledge. I don't seem to despise knowledge at all. I research almost every day. I love knowledge. Better the knowledge, try to apply common sense and understanding about the crisis around health and around food, around medicine. It's very important. So we have to see the health at the level of the great controversy to know that Satan is seriously involved in it that we start taking with much more care and much more with divine guidance and help. Why am I insisting so much on this? Because for me personally, it's the most important thing. Why? If you don't have this awareness, you can take any book and read a book and just use the information in it. That's knowledge. The understanding that in the end time, almost everything has something. You don't check it, then you are missing common sense. You are missing understanding. 
You're going to be hurting people we don't know. So, the bottom line we need to see is very serious than we think. And this requires from us much more dedication, much more seriousness about what we want to do, and much more depending on God to guide us and lead us. In New York alone, you have a thousand of thousands of medical commissioners who have been trained. Then let's look at the results. How many people really helping sick people? Really helping people until they get completely well? Very few, for, for what I know. Why? When you take training, they was exposed to knowledge, but they don't have understanding. They can't move. They read things from the book, and they stop right there. They can't change anything. They can't improve anything. Because we do not have understanding of what we're doing. I'm not putting this as a general thing, but it's my observation. Yes, some people are very conscious. They're doing much, much better work than myself. I respect that. Then my point is we have to start open up, opening our eye much more about this health thing. Because like I was saying previously, <clears throat> if you have a patient, all the hell you're doing to the patient is GMO. All the food that you're eating is GMO. Yeah, the person will have a relief from the disease, but you are breaking his dean, he's gonna have a much problem later on. I mean much problem later on. So please I call everyone not to trash what you know, but to check it again. To apply the knowledge to apply understanding to your knowledge and apply the common sense to all you understand. Considering that at the end time, Satan is really dedicated with all his agents to attack our health and mainly our brain. Now, the next level is Let's go in the Bible and see exactly how God wants us to function. God created us and he gave us how to function. He tells us very well what to eat, what to use when the sickness comes. Let's go first to Isaiah. Isaiah 38, verse 21. Anybody can read it for us, please. Isaiah 38, verse 21. So it's verse 21. Mm-hmm. Oh, I just marked off too. For, I, for Isaiah had said, Let them take a lump of seed and lay it for a plaster upon the boil, and he shall and it shall remove. It shall right. recover. Sorry, sorry. It shall recover. Okay, it's not okay. mm-hmm. <clears throat> 22. Okay, 22. No, 21 is fine. Oh, okay. So Isaiah is a prophet, the prophet yeah. of God. Mm-hmm. Why the prophet just cannot, in the name of God, pray and the person get well? Why the prophet mm-hmm. recommending her? Because this prophet believed that God created her 
Mm-hmm. And using the herb is a God way. It's a God healing the patient. So God made a fig. Mm-hmm. And God made a fig knowing that this fig can be used as food and also as a fig leaves. It's a good medicine. Dry fig is a very good to disinfect this cancerogen, you know, cancerous wounds and all of that. It helps to debris the wound, all of that. Fig is a great medicine. Who created? God. And then, today, we are many pastors, we don't believe in this thing. But in the Bible, the prophets believe in a herb, and they use a lot of herbs. Today, many Adventist pastors are on medication from the hospital. But they do not understand God's way of taking care of health. So health comes to the level of trust. We do not trust what God makes, but we trust what men make. It becomes a matter of faith. Who do you trust? And sometimes people come up and say, oh, the herbs are poisonous. Really? Our loving father makes poisonous things for his children. Poisonous herbs come out after sin, and a very few of them. If you take a hundred herbs, maybe one will be poisonous. And that poisonous herb have antidote quickly. So the deception is very far. Even to destroy the faith in God of provision, God of provide a medicine, we don't trust them anymore. We trust man-made pills. It's a matter of belief. It's a thinking process problem. It's a great controversy in our mind. It's a point say very well that every minister, every single minister, She'll be training the church members for medical missionary work. They should be well involved in it. They will depart from this divine recommendation. Today, unfortunately, if you are medical missionary full time, everyone will look at you like, really, you're going to be living with that? But if you are hard to be a medical doctor, to be prescribing drugs every day, everybody applauds you, everybody respects you. Seriously. But if you choose God's way, you're like, ah, honestly? But when you choose what is approved by the world, everybody applauds that. Then our mind becomes very worldly. We trust what Satan has set up our system than what God has set up. And we are going to see. If we know herb and understand food, we can treat any disease. I don't care what disease is. Any disease. Any disease. Two years ago, I was with a Dr. Benz in Tennessee. He have run clinic based on natural practice for years in Mexico, in America, many places. He said he had a car accident with his wife, and she broke two ribs and one leg, something like that. They did not have insurance, all of this, to cover all the expenses. And he took the wife home with the herbs. He fixed all the bro- he, bro- he fixed all the broken bone of the wife. Because he had to read a level where he believed that God's provision can work. How many medical missionaries today will have a broken bone and believe that if we use her, we will be fixed? By the way, we don't even have so much knowledge anyway because we just have a little knowledge and we rely on that. We do not go deeper into it. There's a lot about herb we don't know. Herbalists use herb to make a battery for the car. Only the herb to make a battery. And when I study this science, I find out that our body is very electrical. And when we look at a cancer patient, their level of electricity of the body is very low. You can read it with Dr. Robert Young. They did a serial research about body electricity and the disease. 
And when I learned this, I was like, okay, for any cancer patient, the first thing I will be doing is raising the person level of electricity, giving high good minerals. You could not conduct electricity without good minerals and without oxygen in our body. And the most conductive mineral of oxygen in our body is iron. I will give you high dose of iron. Be careful. Do not use synthetic iron. It will bind you. They use iron extra from plants like elderberry, gold dog, yellow dog, curly dog, guinea hen weed, all this iron from there, it will never bind you. I mean never, because the body control how much you can use and what you don't need. We are in trouble because we don't believe. If we do believe in a natural thing, we should be digging deeper, 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 deeper in the resource. So we just stop on this thing, do carrot juice, do this, do that, and do some garlic and this and this, and you will be fine. Yes, it's going to give you a lot of good relief. We are too much superficial. We have to go deeper. If I take the example of hydrotherapy, Kellogg used to practice hydrotherapy, something that God has taught him. He do this for eight hours. He call it wet sheet box. They raise up your body temperature and then keep it there like that high for eight hours. And I find out that when you raise body temperature, it raises your also immune power. Your body becomes very strong. Your immune system becomes very strong. And at the same time, cancer cells do not resist a higher level of body temperature. The cancer cells start dying at the level at the 100 and 506 degrees in your body. So if you can raise body temperature and maintain it for long, and during that time you're taking a medicine, you're doing a great treatment, like mineral, literally great treatment. And why now I practice the worship for five hours? And believe me, the results are amazing. There was a sister, she went to centers in Tennessee, went to other centers. She had a big, big fee. It's a serious edema caused by cancer. For seven months, she was doing this natural treatment, go to center to center. And then she was in a center in Austin, New York, and the sister called me to come if I can help in that center. I went, I saw the big fee, and I was like, okay, edema that is linked to the lymphatic system. Your lymphatic system is congested. And the, man, the woman cannot really move or do exercise to sweat. So what can I do? I put her on a wet sheet pack. Raise the body temperature with hydrotherapy. Then put her in the wrap for five hours. And when she was in the bed, green juice, orange juice, um, lemon juice. Because lemon juice have a high level of vitamin C and vitamin C diuretic. And then adding much more anything that will move the lymphatic system, like cleaver, all of these herbs. If you want to question this, you can call the sister. I, I really don't want to mention people's name, but leave it alone. The very next day, the big fee went normal, went back to normal. It was amazing. Myself, I was like, wow. And the sister is a nurse. And she said, her doctor said nothing can get this feet down. And they have been trying natural things, hospital things for seven months. Nothing was moving. Because I trust God away. And when you trust God, what happens? God is going to work. For example, if you take Cascara Sagrada right now, how does Cascara Sagrada know that you have to move your your God, you have to move your colon, please. 
Cassia Sagrada do not have any brain, the God commanded her to do exactly what God said. It is the word of God behind his her to accomplish what God says. So taking these things, it is accepting God's word. It is obeying his command, and God will make it work. So it's a matter of faith and belief. Who do we trust? Recently, a couple of months ago, another nurse, sick of cancer, lymphoma, went through all the treatment. She used the chemo. She was well, and the cancer came right back. Now she's become desperate. don't know what to do. And by God's grace, we do most of the things. The cancer was in the spleen, was here, was there. We do this uh, herbal chemo, everything, the herbal radiation, and we do where she parked. Boom, change the diet, use the herb, everything, use the oil, Oregon oil, black seed oil, hemp oil, a lot of stuff. By God's grace, cancer disappears from the spleen, from the other system. Something the gospel cannot do, God always will do it. Do we believe in this thing? Do we research deeper in it? Another example, Dr. Ingram, Ingram Cass, you can see him on YouTube. He had Lyme disease. It was so bad that he had to close down his office. He cannot function anymore. It was so bad. He traveled to Europe, Asia, go to see all the specialists that can help you with the Lyme disease. Nothing was working. And finally, somebody told him, go use Oregon oil and, and sage oil. Use a very high dose. Guess what? The man went and used these two oils, high dose. He was taking one ounce of concentrate Oregon oil a day. And I think one ounce of sage oil. After two months, the lime was completely gone. It was moving from place to place until it was completely wiped out. And the man went back to work. That's how much God can heal anything if we just believe, if we just learn and apply things righteously. So when we don't have confidence in something, we cannot research on that thing. We cannot build, we cannot go deeper into it. Today, the whole world is in a deep research about medical invention. They do much research on new drugs. How many researchers are direct on the herbs? The herb God has made for our good, our healing. How many researchers are dedicated for that? Very few. Maybe less than 1%. But if we really trust God, we should be researching on these things and go deeper, deeper to prove to the world that God is right and God can provide and God can heal these people. It's important for us to understand these things. Because if you don't believe it, you won't research on it. How many Adventists are nurses, medical doctors, researching every day on health? They, what, they, they research the herb? No. They research God's way? No. No. They research in worldly ways. And by the way, pharmacare. It's a witchcraft. And more than this, they say that Hippocrates is the father of medicine. But guess what? That man never used any drug. He used only herbs. How can we call him the father of medicine and no medical doctor using herbs? Something's wrong with the system. Everything is upside down. So I encourage everyone to start researching God's way, to grow in knowledge, in understanding, and common sense. I mean all of these three words. You need to research to have knowledge. You need to apply understanding, considering the danger of the end time in certain world. You need to apply now common sense. Let things make sense to you. It's important for us to know that God we cannot fail. He just cannot. Now, 
Let's understand what is disease. What is disease? We are going to read from the school prophecy quickly. We are going to read from Ministry of Healing. <clears throat> Ministry of Healing, page 127, paragraph 1, to see what is the disease. It says, the only hope of a better thing is in the education of the people in the right principle. Do we get that? It's education, not medication. No, education. Not more drugs, no, more knowledge, more understanding. We'll continue. Let physicians teach the people that restorative power is not in drugs, but in nature. Disease is an effort of nature to free the system from condition that result from a violation of the laws of health. So that is the definition of disease. Let me read it again. Disease is an effort of nature to free the system from condition that results from the violation of the law of health. For example, if you have a fever right now, you want to get down the fever. No, that's bad. The fever is a sign that your body is fighting to get out of some problem. That fever is not a problem. Disease is your friend. It's a body effort fighting against what is wrong. And you need to assist your disease. Then what do we do? We try to suppress disease so we go completely against it. Now we have another example for uh, uh, the the acid reflux. When you have acid reflux, when you go to the doctor, he's gonna give you medicine to really raise your the pH of your hyaluronic acid, so you feel a good relief and you're happy. But that's very dangerous. Why? The hyaluronic acid is your number one protection. If you eat any fruit right now, that fruit have a lot of bacteria. But the hyaluronic acid kill or most of this thing that it will not go deep, deep down into your absorption, go in your blood. It's in your barriers, your protection. When you have acid reflux, what happens? Most of the time, your each part, your pylori is infected, and infection produces fermentation. Now, when you eat rice right now, Rice carbohydrates. And when carbohydrates are breaking down, it's going to produce also a lot of hydrogen. Plus the infection. And you have much hydrogen coming up. And you're pushing this, gas, this hydrochloric acid into your uh, uh, esophagus. And guess what? You feel the burn. The problem is not the burn. The problem is the infection that is creating too much hydrogen and also your carbohydrates that are bringing too much hydrogen in a picture. I tell to this patient, go remove all grain, wheat, rice, everything from your diet and take Oregon oil to treat the infection. Guess what? It go away. Then the doctor will do what? Try to, to make you eat the thing. But when you are really raising the pH of your, we know the pH, when it gets higher, it becomes weaker. Okay? The pH of your hydrochloric acid is very, very low. That is very strong to break down heavy protein, anything. So when you make that thing weaker, 
you are exposed to worm, to any kind of infection, any kind of bacteria, any kind of yeast later on. The fever is to help the body, helping the lymphatic system to sweat out most of the stuff in our body. And you have your lymph node in your, uh, in your uh, armpit and your private part. That's why you will see that when you sweat in this part, you have a little strong smell than the regular sweat. Why? The lymph node collects this stuff and all the bad things to try to flush it out from your body. And then what, what do we do? We shut it down. Nothing heals you than sweating. But guess what? We put these antiperspirant things. We don't want to sweat. And most of the antiperspirant have a lot of aluminum in it. We are just working against ourselves. Sweating is healing. So we go against it. We want to suppress it. That's how wise we become today. No common sense. A lot of knowledge, but no common sense. No wisdom. No understanding. How many of us using antiperspirant? Because we don't want to sweat. But do not forget, you have more than three times the amount of lymphatic fluid in your body. If you have, for example, one gallon of blood in your body, you have more than three gallons of lymphatic fluid in your body. And lymph fluid is your sewer system. All your cells bathe in your lymph, the poop in your lymph, the pee in your lymph. And the, the lymph collects all of these things and then try to eliminate them, to take them out of your body through your lymph node, and you have to sweat. Now your heart in your lung pumping the blood, nothing really pumping your lymph. How your lymph moves? When you are moving around, when you exercise, when you're walking around, that's how your lymph moves. That we're trying to suppress. It's like if you clog your bathroom, your toilet right now, how your house is going to smell very bad. So when we're trying to shut down any way of sweating, we are keeping all the toxic in our body. It will get toxic, toxic, toxic until it becomes <laughs> irreversible. We are having a lot of knowledge and we're missing understanding. So the disease is not a problem. Disease is your friend. Disease is helping you to get rid of something bad. So the medical system believes that disease is a problem. We believe that disease is a friend. Disease is telling you something wrong. Help the body to get rid of it. The medical doctor gives you the pill to suppress the symptom. And you feel okay. Guess what? It's going to get worse. So they have a lot of knowledge, but they don't have understanding. They're managing disease. They're not healing any disease. The medical system, I call it disease management system, not the healing system. That's why God has called us to give a light about health. As we understand what is disease, then the way we should approach it must be completely different. I was mentioning earlier the great controversy and health. It's about trust. God made a food for us, what we should eat. And Satan also made a food that we should eat. Now by the choice we are making, we are reflecting who we believe. I want to repeat that again, please. God made a natural food. Satan makes GMO food. By the choice of food we choose to eat, we are reflecting who we trust and who in who we believe. If you believe in God, you will eat the food he provides. If you will eat in Satan's food, you are believing in Satan. Unwillingly. We have been so conditioned today. Many young people can't eat vegetables. The candy, they will eat it. Cookies, they will eat it. Milk, eat it. All of these things, eat it. It's a belief. 
but it's, it's put in such a way that it becomes normal. You will see in the Bible, anytime God wants to use anybody in a very special way, He gives instructions to the mother what to eat, what not to eat. Because God knows how much the food, even from the time of pregnancy, plays a lot in the brain of the child, in the wellness of the child, in the spiritual level of the child. What our pregnant women eat today, they drink everything, some of them in the smoke. I'm talking about people in the world. The people in the church, we eat a lot of GMO food without knowing. Destroying and jeopardizing the health of our little child. We have knowledge, but we don't have understanding. We are not applying common sense to what we know. Time to Hello. It's not playing. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hi, it's Mookie on the line. Say it again, please. Hello? Hello? So, great, in this great controversy, the choice we are making, we are reflecting our belief. The next thing is, I uh, will talk about neuroplasticity. The neuroplasticity it is this ability, this is a new science of our brain, that our brain in adaptation to anything, when we adapt ourselves to anything, the brain grow brand new cells for that thing. For example, the first day you start learning how to drive a car, you hold the wheel with all your strength. You have all your attention. But after you know how to drive, you start driving up a couple of times. You can even drive hand free. Why? Your brain has really made the cells that are specialized in driving. It becomes normal to drive. Same thing with your food. If you're eating bad food, your brain develops special cells for eating this bad food. People call it addiction. Yes, sometimes you go much more than addiction. It's a brain conditioning. And that cannot be reversed overnight. You have to be educated and make a decision to get out, to really get rid of these things. And then slowly, slowly, your brain will be rewired. I believe any disease can be treated if we learn the right way and find the right herb, right medicine, right diet right lifestyle, right sleeping, right exercise, everything combined. God will heal. So in all our habits, we are developing neuroplasticity. Every single habit. So this thing that we are not believing in God medicine, but we believe in a certain medicine, our brain functions like that. So when we have a problem, the first thing we think is medicine, not God. It's a brain conditioning, and more than that, you are your mind. And what is your mind? Your mind is the functioning of your brain. So if you are trust much more on medicine, then you trust Satan than God. I want us to understand much more what I'm trying to say. I do not 100% despise the medical system. They're helping a lot. They can diagnose you. They can do a lot of stuff. You might need some serious help from the doctor. Do not despise them. My problem is we should not make it become a problem of faith. Like we trust them than God. That is the matter we're talking about. That trust makes us develop brain cell of believing so much in the doctor that when he says something, we can't listen to it. We can't despise it, sorry. It was in 2000, I think, 10 or 11. There was a brother sick in the church. She had a leukemia. Bad. And I went to visit him in the hospital. While he was eating, it was egg, white bread, and milk. 
a thing was some seasoning in the thing that was here. That was in a hospital. I let the family know, if this man eating this thing, it's going to be bad. Please change this diet. The family told me that's what the doctor recommends. Okay. I try to explain. People trust doctors so they can't question anything. I was praying for this. We have seven days of prayer and fasting for this patient. I stopped. I said, I'm not doing this anymore. Because if you're going against God's thing, it is nothing going to work for you. In a time of ignorance, God winks. But when you know, you become disobedient. God won't bless that. He ends up dead. That's how we get in trusting our own way so much that God weighs like nothing. It's not good. Herb are poisonous. Everything is dead. Many medical missionaries, you can't take them right out to the bush and they can point to you at least 50 herbs and name them. This is this. This is plantain. This is bird dog. This is yellow dog. This is this. this. We don't. How are you medical missionaries? You don't know what you have to use. How that work in our head? It's because we are not taking it seriously to see that this is a war that we must know what we're using. We must trust God and prove God right. I learned a lot from Dr. Sebi. Because the men use herb to treat almost everything. Cancer, whatever, anything. These herbs. I was amazed. I was like, wow. Somebody understand the thing very well. He really encouraged me to do more research on herbs. We need to know the herbs. Because it's God medicine. It's God pharmacy. We have a moral obligation. If we believe in God's way, we must know this. It is a must. If you are a medical missionary, you can't identify herb. I'm sorry. You have to unlearn most of the things and learn new things. It is very important. And most of the herb we know is German. When I read the book of uh, Professor Arnold Harris, and this man explained to you how most of the food we eat is fake. He's a white man. He removed all the white things from his diet, all this flour, white flour, all of this stuff. He do much green, berries, fruits. After a couple of months or years, the man skin start being changed from white to what I can call brown. And then he did the research to see, guess what? The genome being changed. The genetic code are being changed. That's what food can do to you. By the way, if you don't eat for a man, seven days you're gone. Women can go to nine days because women have a life, much more life in them. Then we are literally made of what we're eating. I mean literally made of what we are eating. You eat junk food, you become a junk person. I'm sorry to say that, but that is the truth. You eating junk food, you will become a junk person. If you are carrying and nourishing junk thought, you will be a junk person. You have a junk belief, you will be a junk person. If you're eating right food, with a right thought, right belief, you'll be a right person. important to get these things right. So neuroplasticity, we need to know these habits we are developing. Not trusting God. We are strengthening our brain against God. That brain cannot be sealed in trusting God. That's what Mr. Hoy says. If we are not believing these things, it's hard. Sometimes she put it in such a hard way that we can't be saved. It's not because she's making the salvation conditioned by diet and how we live. No, it's by what we're doing reflecting who we believe. Let me repeat that again. What you are consuming, what you're doing is a reflection of who you trust. 
If you trust God, you will go God's way. If you're using Satan's way, you are trusting Satan without even thinking about it. It raises our ages page 324, paragraph 1. It says that we do not need to choose to worship Satan. All we need is to just neglect to do God's ways, God's will. Automatically, Satan come in. So when we neglect to trust God, his way, his method, how come prophets in the Bible use the earth? And today we pass or use and make all the, all the drugs, all the bad stuff. How many, who are we really believing? Who are we trusting? So your salvation don't depend on your food, but your choice of food, your choice of lifestyle, revealing who you believe and who you trust. Very important to understand. Which voice are you obeying? God's voice, God's word, or the word, the voice and the word of this world. And this world belongs to the devil. He's the prince of the air, the prince of this world, because Satan sold out the earth to him. Yes, Christ is, is buying it back and all sin. So as we look at neuroplasticity, we look at the health in a great controversy. Now I'm going to be talking about forgiveness and our, what I call, our emotional health. There are many patients sick of unforgiveness. Very, very sick. Some people have cancer just from unforgiveness. And when you work with them through all of this, until they release the problem, they accept to forgive. Healing comes very fast. We need to know our brain chemistry. When you are happy right now, your brain gives you a lot of happy hormones, and this thing boosts your immune system. When you're happy, your hormones are happy. When you're happy, your cells are happy. When you are sad, your cells are sad. Anything that is stressful, they have, the research from Harvard shows that more than 90%, 90% of disease come from stress. And stress comes from where? Unbelief and self-abuse. Overworking, self-defense, everything. There's a lot of stuff out of stress. If you get very angry right now, you can see that your heart starts beating faster because you have too much adrenaline increasing your system. Sometimes I pronounce things in the French. I'm sorry because I learned most of the things in French. And this raising your heartbeat is a big trouble for you. When you have an issue with somebody, the answer you see the person, your feeling change, your demeanor change, everything starts changing. Same thing about faith. If you fully trust God, any problem you have, you know I have a God, bigger God than my problem, or how to take it to him. You are peaceful. But if you don't know, if you don't trust God, any problem you have, you take it upon yourself. It will crush you. The thinking, the brain health, the emotional health is extremely important. Some women, when they go through some stress, it changes their hormone function quickly. It messes up a lot of stuff. People lose their baby just in stress. Unforgiveness is worse than any disease. It will kill you. It will change your body chemistry. It will change your brain chemistry. When you stress out, your adrenal glands are completely in trouble. Your cortisol level is mixed up. Your serotonin is upside down. You can't sleep well. Your melatonin is completely like, I don't know. 
So anything, any relationship, anything that is hurtful, if you cannot fix it, you got to probably go off to find some solution quick. Sometimes the relationship we have with ourselves is so bad. Let me repeat that again. Sometimes the relationship we have with ourselves is so bad. We are many. We can forgive everybody else, but we cannot forgive ourselves. You do something wrong, you're going to spend a whole day beating on yourself. Why do you have this wrong? Why did this happen again? Why do you do it again? Okay, you already did it. So why you did it will not help you. Say, so Lord, help me out. Show me new principles. Show me new ways to overcome this in my life. Lord, I need you so bad. You can even get in prayer and fasting about it. But do not spend a whole day on why, 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 because it will not help you. Our thinking, the principle we live by, will it heal us or will it kill us? If you are somebody very resentful, you cannot be healthy. If you always have a stony face, you can't be healthy. Because laughter alone is a healing medicine. Some people are very allergic to laughing. No. It's put there to heal you. Laugh. Even laugh for nothing. Because it's a medicine. It's preventive and curative. Both. Forgiveness is very important. We need to develop the forgiving spirit. It's part of your health message. Do not hold any grudge against anybody. The next is guilt. If you forgive yourself, you won't be guilty of anything. If you accept God's forgiveness. By the way, when it comes to forgiveness, I need to say something here. We are many, we go to God begging for holding for forgiveness. You know, the Bible don't change these things. Only pagan begging their God for forgiveness. But our God has forgiven us. Let me repeat that again. We have been forgiven. Now the knowledge of the forgiveness must lead us to repentance and reformation. Okay. Romans chapter 2 verse 4. The knowledge of God's goodness leads us to repentance. So when you spend your time on begging for forgiveness, God forgive you already. That knowledge now leads you to repent. Say, Lord, thank you for forgiving me. I don't want to go that way anymore. I need the Holy Spirit to stop doing the wrong thing. That knowledge that you are forgiven is leading you to repent and to reform your life. If you don't believe you are forgiven, guess what? You are under the yoke of guilt and you keep begging for forgiveness. Go, go through all the penitents. These are not God's institutions. It's not godly teaching. We do it all the time. You do something wrong, you can't breathe anymore. That's why you are a sinner. All you can do, all the best thing you can do is to sin. Only by God's grace you can do something right. When you fall, that's your natural failure. Don't spend your time on your, why I fall, why I do this. Run to God without delay for Satan to control you. These beliefs play a lot in your health. The Bible says, if you don't forgive, you are not, you will not even feel your forgiveness. It doesn't mean God will not forgive you. God forgives you, but your brain cannot accept forgiveness and will not forgive somebody else. So, if you can't forgive someone, that means you can't receive divine forgiveness. You just cannot. Because the brain can't do two things. I will believe two things at the same time. No. Especially when they are contrary, contrary to each other. And these things are linked to your health. The other thing is fear. The fear of the future. Be afraid of many things that we will never, even we can never fix. Or things that will never come to pass. That we are afraid of. We worry about. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness and hell. Very important. The next thing is prayer for healing. All we're doing today is the introduction to the medical missionary world. Prayer for healing. We are going to look at divine 
provision about these things. To see if we have to correct something or not. I'm going to read from ministry, no, medical missionary. Medical missionary, page 13, paragraph 4. Medical missionary, page 13, paragraph 4, going to page 14. It says this. Many have expected that God will keep them from sickness merely because they have asked him to do so. But God did not regard their prayer because their faith was not made perfect by work. God will not work a miracle to keep those those from sickness who have no care for themselves, but are continually violating the law of health and making no effort to prevent disease. When we all, when we do all we can on our part to have health, then may we expect that the blessed result will flow and we can ask God in faith to bless our efforts for the preservation of health. He will then answer our prayer if his name can be glorified thereby. Next, let's pay attention to this now. But let all understand that they have a work to do. God will not work in a miraculous manner to preserve the health of persons who are taking a short course to make themselves sick by their careless inattention to the law of health. So God will not do no miracle. Next paragraph. It says, Those who will gratify their appetite and then suffer because of their intemperance and take drugs to relieve them may be assured that God will not interpose to save health and life which are so Recklessly peril. The cause has produced effort. Many as their last resource follow the direction in the word of God and request the prayer of the elder of the church for their, for their restoration to help. Let's listen carefully to this now. God does not see fit to answer prayers offered in behalf of such. For he knows that if they should be restored to health, they will again sacrifice it upon the altar of unhealthy appetite. So God does not see fit to answer this prayer. How many times pastors and elders Go to the patient to pray. Sometimes with the oil to do anointing. But nobody asks, is this person violating the law of health? Why? Because the pastor himself, the elder himself, is violating all the law of health. So we are ignoring and we are calling God power to bless our ignorance. God said, no, I can't answer prayer like that. And we are suffering because of lack of knowledge and understanding. The majority of the church violating the law of health. Majority of the pastor and elder violating the same law. And when somebody is sick, now we are ready to pray and fast. God said, I will not answer these prayers. Then our religion is becoming very empty because of disobedience. So when we go to the sick people, we need to explain this to them. The next point. I'm going to come back again to the very important point. That should be the first part. It is our belief system.
for my little experience, the biggest trouble for the sick person is the question on the love of God. You will never go to any hospital and say these sick people are blessing God. No. They might not say anything. The general thing you will hear from sick person is, God, why me? Why am I suffering so much? You know what that means? It's an accusation against God. I am so sick, I'm praying, and you're not doing anything for me. If you love me so much, you give your only begotten son for me, and I'm suffering, and you can't do anything for me, how much do you love me, God? And God says, you violate all the law of health, and I can't do anything because you make a choice. Now, let us follow this carefully. When we are sick, we have a wrong picture of God's love. And God's love. I'm going to read from Great Controversy, page 500. Great Controversy. Page 500, paragraph 2. He says this, by the same misrepresentation of the character of God as he had practiced in heaven, causing him to be regarded as severe and tyrannical, Satan induced men to sin. By what? By misrepresentation of God's character of love. That's how the angel have been led to sin, Adam and Eve have been led to sin. When we read these are ages, page 20, I want to keep the word misrepresenting God's character of love. Okay, let's keep that very well because that's, what, that's the problem. These are ages, these are ages, page 22, paragraph 1, it says, the earth was dark through misapprehension of God, that the gloomy shadow might be lightened, that the wall might be brought back to God. Satan deceptive power was to be broken. What was his deceptive power? It to misrepresent God's love to everybody. I'm going to go back to this great controversy again. So the whole earth now is covered with gloom, with such shadow, such darkness. Why? It is the darkness of the misapprehension of God's character of love. And this is the darkness in the mind of the sick patient. So when you go to heal, to help any sick patient, you need to know the person's problem. He's the biggest problem is he is accusing God in his mind. That is the biggest problem of the sick patient. That he's so depressed, so discouraged, because he is questioning how much God loves him, and he's suffering so much and God doing anything. Let's see how dangerous this can get. Great controversy again. Great controversy. Great controversy, page 569. 569, paragraph 1. It, says, it is certain constant work, a constant effort, to misrepresent the character of God, the nature of sin, and the real issue at stake in the great controversy. That is his, his constant work. So when the, somebody is sick, there's a demon around the person. Casting this doubt in their mind. Say, look, you are a Christian. You pray in God, he's doing nothing for you. Next, next, next. Now, if that is the biggest trouble, let's analyze that a little bit. How Lucifer becomes Satan? Question number one. Who 
create Lucifer, God? That's the answer. Question number two, who created Satan? The answer is, God never created Satan. But Lucifer, in the misrepresentation, the doubt he had on God, he was changed from Lucifer into Satan. Please pay attention to this. It's a key point in medical missionary work. That was called medical missionary. You are not only healing the body, but you are healing from the spirit first. So say, Lucifer becomes Satan by misrepresenting God's character of love to himself. He starts questioning divine wisdom. So when you go to a sick person, you need to know the biggest problem this person has is the misapprehension, misunderstanding, and misrepresentation of God's character of love. It is your first job to restore the right representation of God's character to the person, to restore the faith of the person, to restore the confidence that in God's love, that God still loves him and God wants to save him. How do you do this work? Please, I keep saying this. It is the most important part in your work as a medical missionary. Changing people's mind, bring them back to God. That is the most important and number one to do before you even think about herb and medicine. Why? Sick person is questioning divine love. If he die in that condition, he die in sin. He cannot be saved. How Lucifer becomes Satan? By questioning divine wisdom by misrepresenting God's love to himself. And this is the biggest issue the sick patient is facing. So when I'm with the patient, I start asking the patient, what do you think about God's love? He said, oh, right now, I don't know. I'm so sick, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm doing everything I can do. God's not hearing my prayer, God's not doing nothing for me. 99% of patients, even Christians, will say that. Sometimes people will not say something, but it's in the head. So we are accusing God for not answering the prayer. But we are not taking responsibility that we have been violating the law of health. Why? We don't know. So I, if the person is a believer, I show to the person, God cannot answer prayers when we are ignorant of health laws, and when we are violating them, God cannot do that. He will be supporting evil if he's doing the stuff like this. So the best thing you need to see here is you got to take responsibility. You need to know you violate the law of health. Otherwise, you can't be sick. Disease or sickness never fall from the tree. No. We walk it out by disobedience. Let me repeat that again. Sickness or disease never fall from any tree. We, by our disobedience, walk this in ours. If we want help, we need to reverse it. We get sick by disobedience, we need to get well by obedience. So, as I start helping the patient to see that he has violated the law of health, and person will say, what are the law of health? And start going, number one is your thinking. Right now you are accusing God. You can't show somebody you are accusing in your mind. It's not possible. You can't put both in the same brain. You cannot be accusing God in your mind at the same time believe that he's going to heal you. It can't work. That is the general mentality of the sick patient. I have been praying. I have been praying for days and weeks now. Nothing happening. God's not hearing my prayer. How in such a doubt, in such misapprehension of his love, can you get healed? So I start putting things in God's eternal purpose. You see what? Putting things on God's eternal purpose. What do I mean? I ask the patient, do you believe God created you? He says, yes. Do you believe God created her? Yes. Do you believe that God knows you will be sick? He says, yes. 
So God in creation, he knew that we are going to sin and we are going to suffer sickness. And his eternal wisdom and love, he put the healing properties in the herbs. Wow, such a good God. Such a God of love. Heart and love. By the way, God is not God of love. God is by nature love. He is love. He's made of love. He is love. Sorry, nobody makes him. His nature is love. He cannot get love. That's what I to the patient that God loved us so much that he made a provision for the problem before it comes to pass. God created a herb first before he created a human being. And God put a healing properties in the herb before he created us. Such a great doctor. He give you medicine before you get sick. He show you the medicine first. Our God is love. And start doing this cleansing to the patient now. Give them the medicine to go to the bathroom. Start doing the hydrotherapy. Give them the herb, doing this thing. Just start feeling the release. God who created the water, know the water will heal you. God who created the sun, he put in that sun the healing properties. And the sun work with the fat under your skin to make vitamin D3. And that vitamin D3 plays a lot in a lot of disease. In the healing of the disease, of sickness. So God put in the sun the healing properties. In the water, healing properties. In the air we breathe, healing properties. In exercise, healing, in the food. Ever in trusting in Him, we have a healing. Such a God. He put a healing in it. Every single thing. Your food has healing. Your water has healing. The air you breathe has healing. Such a God of love. For the language sake, I say so. So you start restoring to the patient that the problem is not God. The problem is you bow into the law of health. If you go back to this law, he will heal you. By doing this, you are restoring not only the physical health, but the spiritual health. You are bringing the person back to God. You are restoring the confidence in God's love. The, from that point now, when you pray, the person can see that you are praying the God that loves him, the God that provides anything that can heal him. When you take Cascada Sagrada right now, he's going to let you hold to the bathroom. God knew that we are going to be constipated by the bad food. That's why he made a herb to remove our constipation. And we have to be thankful. We have to see love in that provision. So the biggest problem about any, any patient is depression, is questioning divine love, is misrepresenting God to himself. And how dangerous is that? It changed your brain chemistry. It changed your thinking. And we talked about neuroplasticity before. So more you think like that, no, your brain is against God. And if your brain is against God, God cannot heal you. Because you need a harmony in your thinking, your belief, and God provision in God's world. So the same way the misapprehension of God's character has changed Lucifer into Satan, that's how most of these sick patients I change from a person to a somebody who is completely against God. That's why your main work as a medical missionary is to change that mind. It, that mind is developed, it's sick, it's dangerous, it can be lost. You have to show to the person that God made the water to heal you, the air to heal you, the herb to heal you. You bring back to the person to see. God is the only person who really cares for you. And the instant that thing is restored, the person trusts God again. Guess what? God power gonna walk through the hydrotherapy. God power gonna walk through the sprout food, the juicing, the salad, the herb we're gonna use, all of these things. Because now the brain, the thinking of the patient is now in a harmony with God, then God power can work. But if that sick person still be against God, question divine love, eating the bad food, using the bad medicine, the drug, God cannot work against that because God cannot force a blessing on anybody. 
So our work as a medical, medical mission is a very serious work. Therefore, we need a total education, total knowledge, and total understanding. It's not just to release, relieve the patient from pain and symptom. It's about restoring the whole soul to God again. That's why it's called medical missionary. You are healing, but you are on a mission to restore and rescue the soul from the jaw of the enemy. Please, in restoring the mind, maybe I can re- I can put it in this way. Number one, show to the person how Lucifer becomes Satan. That's number one thing to do. Make him see that anybody thinking bad about God, the person has to be changed. How to become devilish. Let the person see the danger of not trusting God and following God's ways. He has to see that. Let him see that the way he's thinking about God will change him so much that he cannot receive any blessing from God. God will give it, but he can't receive it. Number two, show to the patient that from the beginning, before God created man, he created air to heal him the water to heal him, the herb to heal him, everything before he created man. So let the person see that before you are sick today, God made a provision for all you have to use to be well. And let him see love in that provision. And then number three, ask the person, can you see God's love in all of this? Can you see that God loves you so much that he Make a way to heal you that you didn't know you were calling it his love. Love helps. And next thing you do, let the person see the violation of the law of health is violation of the law of life. For example, to live this life, you have to be sustained by water, by air, by food. Let's say you don't want to breathe anymore. You hold your nose and you hold everything. You're going to expire after a couple of minutes. Why? You are violating the law of life. If you refuse to eat, you're going to die after a couple of days. Why? You are violating the law of life. So let the patient see that he is violating the law of life. It's not God who is doing anything. He has to go back to the law of life. If you do this thing very well, the person will take responsibility that he's wrong and at the same time show him God has forgiven you already, and he's willing to give his spirit to raise you up, to undo everything, to encourage you, to give you the strength, to change even your thinking and restore you completely. These four steps will make the patient now available for any treatment you are going to bring. Sometimes it can happen that the case is so bad, maybe the person is so much in pain, Okay, so start that pain down first before you continue. There are many good ways to use to, to, to get down pain. Give the person the combination of turmeric, black pepper, and hemp oil. I mean a real hemp oil. When you combine this, you're going to subside down the pain. Or you can use all of this and then use the heat. Because heat dilates our blood vessel and increase body electricity. If somebody have a knee, knee problem down, is hurting so bad, give him turmeric, black pepper, and hemp oil to drink. Then, on the knee, put coconut oil, then put DMSO, then heat it up with uh, infrared light. I give you in the next 15 minutes, the pain is going to go away. Even less than 15, maybe 10 minutes. It will completely feel a relief. Sometimes we make some very strong extra from hemp. I mean very strong. That's what I give to some cancer patient who is in excruciating pain. Give them the hemp, boom, the pain is gone. Don't just go buy hemp oil in the store, though. Some of the pain, you need to make some strong extra to do that. You have to do it yourself. So you release the pain, now start healing the mind. The mind needs to be healed first. Now the next thing is, 
we need to establish to the patient then based on James chapter 1 verse 10 to 15 the sin how sin comes by law so we lost after devil food devil lifestyle we lost after this and that's why we get in sin and sin when it's finished bring death so you ask the patient when the sin is finished bring death can we say that anything that brings death is sinful if you will say yes any lifestyle that is can bring death is sinful yes any bad habit is it sleeping late is it eating bad all of the habit that can destroy life is that sinful you say yes okay so any habit you're doing now that can kill you that would be suicide you can't be safe with that and people will like wow really yes it will be suicide whoever bring death is sinful so let the person see that if we violate the law of health and we are sick, we are in sin. If you read the healthful living, it's supposed to say ignorance in a health is sin. If you are ignorant of a health law and a health how to take care of yourself, you are in sin. And I'm asking myself how much how many people in the church are in that sin then? He said ignorance in the matter of health is sin. I will find a page later, but you can, you can Google it, you're going to see it. Ignorance in health is sin. When we do this thing very well, we start preparing the patient for healing. And God surely will heal. So great, the health, the health message, the medical missionary work, is a right arm of the third angel of mystery. We have to be very serious about this. We cannot be preaching the three angel message to the world. We are using the world way of health. No, we are against ourselves. Because in this three angel message, there's a health message in the message. And we can't be violating that and pretending to preach the message to people. It's not connecting. It's not in harmony. At all. Again and again, I am not against medical system. I am saying, go have a better system. Preventive way in the respect and obedience to the law of health. And he will make everything else right. May God help us. That our perception and vision about health change. I used to give a lot of carrot juice to the patient. I stopped. Why? God never make any carrots. We make it. And this it will, it will help you. It will not heal you that fast as if you do natural things. Beans are made in England. If you want to go to the Department of Agriculture of America, they're going to tell you that most of the food we eat in, a, in, a, in this grocery store is made in laboratory. Even the one we call organic is man-made. So we are in a crisis of man-made versus God-made. Go and research the origin of carrot. God never make any carrot. The carrot God made is called Queen Ant's leg. It's, in the, it's wild. And the leaves, the leaves of Queen Ant's leg is rich in vitamin A than all the carrot juice you can drink. Go, this is a research. This is science. They took the liver of the wild carrot God has made. This liver are more concentrated in vitamin A than the, all the carrot you can juice. And we, they took the queen ant leg to the laboratory and twist the gene and make a carrot out of that and put it on a market for us. And we all prescribe carrot to everybody. Why we don't prescribe queen ant leg, the one God has made? All these beans we are eating are not healthy. For my knowledge, for my little research, only one bean is healthy. Garbazum bean called chickpea. All the other beans, they are very high in nitrate. Nitrate is toxic. I am not trashing everything. I'm just saying that we need to start questioning everything. 
as much as we can to start replacing things. If you cannot use car or find something that higher environment is, something that's better. We need some transition. That's why I say we need knowledge and understanding and common sense. So please don't say that I say never to touch carrots. No. If you go to a place this is all you have, use that for now. And then start looking for better ways to come out of that. Because we have an enslaved that the only thing available is man made. So you gotta move slowly from man made to God made. I want this to be very clear for us, please. I know it's a great challenge. You don't have Queen Anne's Lake in the market to buy it. But it's the only thing you have to use, use it for now and start finding something better than that. Because you know it's not that healthy. You use what is available and you move forward. Peppermint. Peppermint is man-made. The peppermint can help you to relieve your fever something quickly. Then later on, start moving to the good stuff. Start moving to the right stuff. Our goal is a complete change. It might be progressive, but it needed to be done. Why we do not grow Queen Anne's Lake that God has made? Why we only grow what we make? That's what I call the great controversy about health. The only thing that's available is man-made because we trust our way than God's way. Let all medical missionaries as we can learn wild herb, wild food, God, things God has made. If you go, you, you get wild, wild down the line. Wild down the line have more amino acid. And the body uses the amino acid, acid to make what? Protein. It's much nutritious than eating any beef. Way nutritious than that. Those, most of the patients will say, oh, I look in the protocol, I don't see protein. I say, you don't need any protein. You don't. What do you need? Amino acid. If you want protein, ask the cow where the cow get the protein from. Not from heaven, a cow get all his protein from grass. And why we don't believe that green juice can give us protein? Green juice all have all the amino acids you need for your body to make all the protein the body needed. It is called common sense. It's called understanding. That if you ask the nutritionist, can I replace my protein shake with a green juice? You say, no. You need a protein. You need a protein so much. And I say, no, you don't. He said, you need to eat a piece of beef. You don't eat this, eat that. I said, you don't. If you want to have the protein the beef have, don't eat the beef. Eat what the beef, eat, the cow eat. If you want to be strong like cow, don't eat the cow. Eat what the cow eat. That's what I call understanding and common sense. And we are having the same problem with the medical field and the medical missionary. Oh, I need to get some protein for the patient. Seriously. If you don't need any protein, you need amino acids. And where do you get it from? You get a lot from the grains. And make sure you give him good grains. Because most of the good the green we juice into people is GMO. You gotta be very careful. So I'm going to stop here for now. And my call to anybody listening to this message is, yes, we believe in God's way, but we have to be aware that Satan has poisoned almost everything, that we have to be aware. Don't do drastic change. I remember very well when I was doing this research, I have in my fridge a cut of juice for like half a gallon because I used to juice for two, three days sometimes. Believe me, when I do all the research, I go, I took the green, the, my carrot juice and I dump it. I don't ask you to be so drastic. Go slow in your transition. Learn first. Because if you don't learn first, you give up all, all of this and you don't have nothing to use. It becomes worse. Let us be aware that Satan is seriously in the world of hell. And start learning God's way. 
and slowly transition. Do not do drastic change. It will hurt you. You have been hearing this thing for years. If you patiently transit, it will not kill you. But do it based on understanding, based on knowledge, and based on common sense. Slowly, slowly. If you have been using the GMO herb, transit slowly to the God herbs. My whole goal in this presentation is that we see the medical missionary work to be the, the real thing in a great controversy. It's a wall on our brain, on our very life. So we need to look at it. It's not just about being healthy. It's about salvation. Because Satan is determined to destroy our brain, to condition our brain, to control everything. And we need to be aware of that deception. He controls our food, what we should eat. He controls our medicine, what we should take when we get sick. He wants to control everything. Imagine if you're a medical missionary. You don't know nothing about her. And if Sunday law comes, you cannot buy, you cannot sell. How are you going to work as a medical missionary? You need, right now, you, all the herbs you use, you buy them online. You buy them from um, Evo, Mexico, uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, many other herb companies, but the day you can't buy anything, how are you going to move? We must know this herb by ourselves. We have to know them. If you have a center, you are in a country, you have all the herb around you, you don't know them, but every day you are already buying herb online. They ship it to you every day, and all the herb is around you. Two weeks ago, I went to a place and they say they are, they, they are medical missionaries. They just cut down everything. They cut down their plantain. They cut down blueberries. They cut down their, 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 their yellow dog, bird dog, uh, milk thistles, yarrow, all of this herb around the house. They cut it down. And I was saying, why are you guys call this? I said, we didn't know. How long have you been medical missionary? More than 40 years. And for four, more than 40 years, you keep ordering herb, herb, order, 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 order. And what you have everything around your house. That's how sick we get. Please, I am not insulting. I'm saying that we are in a crisis. We need to research to know God's way. The same way we study the Bible, we must study the divine provision in nature. We must study. We must know. We have to know. If you're an American missionary, you have a center in the country. Imagine if you can grow most of these herbs around your house. If you can't even grow them, go around and pick them. Dry them under the shade. Store them. It's free. You can take care of patients without charging a lot. It's important for us to know these things. So please, if I say anything that's not right, don't consider that. Consider the point is we have to know God struck us. He has unstruck us with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We need to apply determination, consecration to know this about the great controversy, not about us. So may God bless us and keep us. May God rewire our thinking. May God really raise our awareness that we get serious about these things and grow in knowledge and apply understanding to knowledge and apply common sense to the knowledge. May God really bless us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Is there any question? We will be taking it. Yes, I have a question. Yeah. The acid reflux, you were saying oregano oil than um, another oil? What was that? Okay, acid reflux, the first thing you do, remove all the grain first. Remove yeah. these things that are hurting. Right. Remove all the grain, put the person on much good fat. Good fat like avocado, coconut oil, 
seed sprout, juicing, stuff like that first. Mm -hmm. Then use oregano oil, especially P73 from Dr. Ingram. But so far, this is the, mo the oil I trust most because that's what I know. Some people might be making good oil also. The, the, he made his oregano oil from wild oregano from the Siberian, so it's very safe. It's a little bit as much expensive, three times expensive than what you have in the market. Mm -hmm. It's Oregon oil is, is uh, about fifty nine forty nine or nine fifty dollars. The same amount of oil you go in the store is fourteen and fifteen. Mm -hmm. That's a different product. So his Oregon oil will cure this thing. So you have to heal the infection of your each pylori. Okay? Then with the removal of carb from your diet, if you do it very well, in one month, you can completely reverse that. Mm. Yep. Okay. Because I know somebody struggling with that for a long, long time. Yeah, I have a lot of people because we trust medicine. We don't trust that we have to change things. Mm. We have mm. to understand mm. things. I'm gonna call her and tell her. Huh? So if the person one, you can give my number to the person. I can definitely help. Right. Okay. okay. I can definitely help. It depends on the case. You can put chocolate in a. There are many things you can add to the. Pro I don't know how long you have the problem. How much damage you have there? It might require a lot of rebuilding of the cells, so it depends. So okay. I am available to help the person if the person wants it. Okay, I will call. Any tell them. All right. Any other question? I have to make a lot of changes here, I see, for myself as a medical missionary. You have to make a lot of change? Yeah, because as a medical missionary, a lot of these things you that you're talking about, I didn't know. Even though I did the medical missionary training, I mean, at least, you know, I, I didn't go and um, do any research. So now I have to go do some research for myself now. Thank God. Yeah, because I didn't know about these things that you're talking about here. I, I didn't know either. Know, I have a lot of herbs that I bought from these different places now. So now hmm, I use a lot of these herbs. So now I, I these are GMO herbs you are saying. Oh, yeah. And if you have a time, we can do herbal work. We still be in the summer. We can go out there and learn these herbs. Yeah, I would love to do that because I need to know these herbs. Yeah, we do herbal work every year with people. Go out there and show them things that are available like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Lily of the Valley, anybody have any conjecture heart disease problem? I don't care how bad it is. Take a little of the valley, make a good pinch out of that. You will stop that problem right, right away. Mm. So bad. It's so effective. Really? Somebody who grow in iron, use bull dog, yellow dog, elderberry. If mm. you have guinea hen wheat, you can add it to it and make a strong tea that a person drink it slowly. Or you can make a juice from bull dog root, yellow dog, um... Elderberry, you can uh if you can have uh, um, amaranth, you can juice this stuff. Some of them you make a tea. I give you three to four days. The iron level, the person will come back to normal. Just really? like that. The yeah. iron level? Yeah. Hmm. You cannot heal the body without iron because iron is the one that carries oxygen through your body. You can't hmm. carry oxygen and heal. Wow. And it's right there, all over. It was last week. No, this week, this this Monday, I went with a sister and a brother, brother Wendell and his wife. We went to learn some herbs. It was like, how we have this? I don't know how we don't know. 
Your Buddha was right there, Yeruda was right there, Plantain was right there, Milcetal was right there, Blessetal was right there. All of the things was right there. Hmm. Well, I, I have um, um, Plantain mm-hmm. and Dandelion right in front of me here, and um, White Clover and Red Clover. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have those, those are around me, a lot of that. Yes, that's very good. Continue to increase the knowledge. And when you go, you have a center... Grow your own thing or go to some farm and make them grow the bread for you. It's safe, it's cheap, it mm-hmm. makes the work easier. But then mm-hmm. when you go to a different country, they don't have some of those things. Like when I go home, I, I don't see that. I, I see dandelion, can, I don't see plantain. Yeah, you can take the seed. You can take the plantain seed over there, it will grow. Okay. You got plantain, it's a, it's, a, it's a tropical herb. You go in my country, so you can go in Jamaica anyway. Okay, I, okay in Guyana. I, so I'll I'll buy the herb seed. I'll buy buy the seeds and pick it. Yeah, if you see the plantain, the plantain gonna give you the seed that they use for psyllium hog. Mm. You take that as a material. You just cut them. You go back home. You just throw it. You just throw it. You just throw it. You come back. You're gonna grow dandelion right. Uh, you're gonna grow plantain right there. Yeah, dandelion growing wild. Yeah, we have a lot of that. Dandelion, plantain, we can grow anything. And yes, I have a lot of, of peri- periwinkle, all the different colors of periwinkle. But me, I don't use periwinkle because it's GMO plant, I'm sorry. Oh, periwinkle is GMO too. Yeah, we make it. Oh, my God. It can help. It can help. Let me, um, let me be very clear here. I don't want all to be extremist. Use what you know now until you can transition to something better. Mm-hmm. Periwinkle is good. It helps a lot in many cancer and this and that. It helps. But you're going to have better than that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. What about yeah, pe- uh, kid, um, people with kidneys, kidney disease? I know a lot of you have or see and corn, corn syrup. That yeah, these are good, but, but you can't compare that to uh, natural root. Nettle root is a beast to treat your, your, your kidney problem. Mm-hmm. It's a herb called, um, 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 let me, let me look at the name again. It's a stone breaker. Stone breaker is great for your kidney problem. It's a herb called hydrangea. Hydrangea is a, one of the best for any kidney problem. Hydrangea? Yep. It dissolves the stone in your kidney, like literally. Hmm. Really? Stone broker do the same thing. And it's the the apple. Can people get uh-huh. reversed from dialysis? Oh, yeah. Really? I use bladder rock. Bladder rock is very diuric. Okay? I use Bla- bladder rock. Bladder rock? Yeah, bladder rock. It's a great herb for kidney. Mm. Because it has a high level of iodine and other things that help to release kidney quickly. And where you get that from? from? Where you get that from, that that bladder rock from? Yeah. I have to get it You can buy it from Evo Mexico or Southwest Botanical. You can buy bladder rock from them. Okay, all right. I'm gonna check that out. I I, I, I have a friend a friend who's on dialysis and he's so worried about getting off. He get depressed every time he has to go to get dialysis. Okay, I can give you the list of some of the herbs I use for kidney. I use hops. Hops. I use that. yeah hops. Mm-hmm. It's a very very good herb for that. Mm-hmm. I use in natural root and it's taking mm-hmm. a natural seed. Both the root is much more for process. But the nettle seed is great, great. Okay, mm-hmm. nettle root and nettle seed. Rhubarb root. Okay. Mm-hmm. I okay. use uh, juniper, juniper berries. Mm-hmm. I use cascara sagrada. I use your hemby bark. I use a cleaver. I use uh, stone breaker. I use ginger, pure ginger juice. Hmm. I use bladder rock. I use hydrangea. I use sapo. There's a herb. It's a Spanish herb called sapo. It's this thing, It's so good. I mean, very good. Okay. All right. And but when you do stuff like that, 
you know your kidney is a filter. So do not be eating heavy food and protein. It's not good. Anything that is heavy to filter, don't touch it. Mm-hmm. Put a person in the most more fluid diet. Juice and green juice, berry juice, all of this fluid. And, like, it's, it's a whole protocol anyway, okay? You got to do the worksheet part for the person. Make the person sweat a lot for him in a sauna. Because all of us should be eliminated by peeing. You can eliminate that by sweating a lot. You understand? Right. You are taking mm-hmm. off too much work on your kidney so you can mm-hmm. heal the organ. That, okay. is a, that is the real thing. Any okay. organ you want to heal, you got to reduce the work of that organ. For example, if you have a liver problem, I'm mm-hmm. going to make sure I remove most of the fat from your diet and if I put like oregano, uh, like I put like avocado oil or avocado itself and uh, coconut oil, all of this oil, I'm going to mm. put in that diet the enzyme that's going to digest the oil first in your diet. So the enzyme has to digest so that the liver don't need to work so that I can heal the liver easily. Mm. Yeah. Because you can, it's like you right now. If you are very sick, you can't be walking. True. You need to rest. You need to lay down, and all of that rest also helps you for the healing. Same mm-hmm. thing for your organ. Okay. Same thing for any organ. Any organ you want to heal, give a less work to that organ. If you're healing the heart for somebody, for example, heart problem, then you're going to put the person on very fluid diet. Why? If you're not drinking enough water, if your blood is very thick, the heart needs to work harder to pump that blood. True. Now, if you, make, you give to the person ginger juice, all of these uh, blood is thinner. The blood becomes more fluid. The heart is going to work less. Then mm-hmm. you can easily heal that heart. And you, you could give them garlic juice too. Garlic juice too, baby. Very careful. It can, it can hurt some people. Mm. Do it, do it slowly, slowly, slowly. Mm-hmm. You know? So, it's a general principle. Any organ you want to heal, put less work on the organ. Okay. And the healing will be faster. And there's a special enzyme for the liver. Yeah, there are many special enzymes for liver, for pancreas, for this and that. So, there are different okay. kinds of enzymes. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. That, that gives me time to do some research now. Yeah. This is it. This is in, I really enjoy this. This is interesting. I'm glad Thank Kim God. told me about I'm glad Kim told me about it. Thank God. Yes. So we, we really need to take much responsibility. Because yes. God is right, we need to pull God right. Right. I mm-hmm. agree. Thank you so so much. <laughs> Thank God. It seems like I'm not the only one who had questions. Hmm. No, you are not the only one. Some people have questions, but they will require it. Oh. Hmm. Well, I guess some of my questions, they probably will get answers. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I like yeah. to talk, so I will ask. Yeah. Yeah, we, this is the first, uh, this is the introduction. Mm-hmm. And uh, the next one will be on uh, understanding the pH and now, before we go to PA, we're going to look at understanding the, con- the constipation of our body. Okay. We look at constipation as something just to do with colon. No. You have constipation of your kidney, constipation of your liver. Many women can conceive because their fallopian tube is constipated with mucus. Any blockage is constipation. Many people have a brain problem because they are constipated in the brain. They have too much mucus in the brain. You know, so by God's grace, we're going to start looking at these things to understand very well that the biggest problem we have is mucus. And mucus comes from where? Inflammation. Inflammation comes from where? Acidic food. And most of the food we eat from the store is acidic. Even vegan. All right, if we don't have more questions, we have, we have to stop this section here. And uh, God willing, we will continue. Okay. Thank you. May God bless us. 
and let us pray to close. Is there any other question? Otherwise, I will pray. I will pray. No, I don't have any. All right, thank God. Okay, let's pray then. Our God, our Redeemer, your ways are not the best. Your ways are the only way of life. You have your way for health and happiness. It's not the best. It's the only way. Help us to see it and to learn your way, to direct our efforts to understand your ways and your provision. Lord, please bless all the medical missionaries around the globe. Guide us. Help us to increase in knowledge and understanding. To know that you are God, you cannot make a mistake. And you love all with infinite love and all your provision you made with love. Help us to take seriously our consecration to your work. To see that we are soldiers in your army and we have an enemy, the devil. And the devil has set up so much wrong principle we have learned and now we have to unlearn most of these things. Thank you again, Lord. Help us, guide us. Keep enlightening us, giving us more knowledge, more understanding, that we can become much effective for your glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. All right, so we come to the end. I do enjoy the time with you. May God bless all of us, and I expect all of us to be blessed by these things, and we become a very good, consecrated, Medical missionary for God's glory. Thank bye you. Bye bye. Happy blessed day. Bye. Bye bye.